All right, good morning YouTube. What is going on? How are you guys doing? Good afternoon, good evening, whenever you guys are watching this. Welcome back to another vlog. We have the one and only Kiro down there. We're at the Rouge Valley. You guys know this spot. If you guys checked out the last vlog, I'm not going to link it up here because I always say it and then I forget. Um, check that out, guys. We, uh, You saw the B-roll clip in there. This is exactly where we filmed it and it actually turned out pretty sick. So, we're starting off this vlog, maybe with another B-roll clip. I have the stuff back in my backpack. I don't know. How are we feeling, Kira? Should we give him another B-roll clip? You gonna be a good model? <laughs> Kira's always a good model, that's why you get a good looking dog. Anyways though guys, it is beautiful outside. I just wanted to start a vlog today. Just, you know, just say what's up. We're gonna hang out and see how the day unfolds. And uh, yeah, it should be cool. So, let's start with a little B-roll clip. Again, don't have crazy expectations because that's what I'm working with. But as uh, photographers and videographers, we make it happen as creators. So, let's get a B-roll clip going. Three, two, one, go. Now we have our food. The reason I'm talking quietly is because my brother is working at night shift, so he is sleeping right now. But anyways, mom came clutch. I didn't make this. We have two pork chops, some really good potatoes, carrots, but some vegetables, and I took a croissant and a plethora of spices. You guys thought I was playing around. No, orange juice. Super good meal for the first meal of the day. Probably around like 1100. Eh, it depends, 1100 or so, so I'm not gonna eat this. And then I will see you guys when I see you next, okay? Hope you can hear me. Bye. And guys, what is going on? How are you doing? I am back in the kitchen. I don't know if the last clip I was in the kitchen or not. I can't remember. But it is a couple days later, guys. And the vlog's not done yet. It's almost done. But, um, yeah. Lots to like update you guys on, but at the same time, not a lot. You know, the life of a creator. Anyways, it's just at the library. I'll put up some clips there. A lot is changing and upgrading and just going on with the business and stuff. Creator Coaching Academy, which I'm going to bring you guys all along with. Um, so I'm still, some stuff's finalizing, so I'm not going to talk about that now. But anyways, it is 6.30. And I am going to leave to the gym in about like 15 minutes. We're hitting legs today. And uh, yeah, I just want to do a little voiceover update you guys on my goals as far as like strength, lifting, um, hitting legs, squats, all that stuff goes. Because I have a lot of problems with squats. But just in fitness in general, um, in these vlogs, I also want to bring you guys through my my strength goals because I have some numbers I want to hit and I'm getting close and I want to bring you guys all along. So let's do that. I'm going to bring the tiny cameras to the gym and after that, because I can tell I'm going to be hungry. Ooh make something massive here, eat some food, and then I'll finish off this vlog. So, gym, leg day, let's go. And all right, guys, what is going on? Welcome back to another voiceover. Today, we are hitting legs. Now, guys, before we move on to the exciting quote-unquote stuff, which you may just see, um, we're starting off with dynamic stretching. Now, dynamic stretching, guys, regardless of the exercise or the movement you are doing, is a vital dynamic, simply meaning moving. So you can see here I'm doing leg kicks or butt kicks. I'm warming up my entire legs, guys, my hip abductors, adductors, you name it, glutes, hamstrings, quads. You just you want to warm up before you just go straight into squatting, okay? Please, please please you know you don't want to just be you kind of think of it like you know you're cold and you just perform a movement it's just not going to be as fluid you want to warm up the machine a little bit before you start firing does that make sense 
So with that said, we are now moving into squats. The next thing that you definitely want to do, um, I think this is pretty obvious, but some people just jump straight into the weight. You want to hit warm up sets. Okay. So I'm hitting three working sets, my actual sets, but to get there, you have to warm up. Okay. So what we're doing is we're attempting three plates, as you guys know, uh, or some of you know, I had a hip injury, a hip impingement for a long time. Hence why I was working with Kyle, who was my squat coach. Um, we know we don't really work together too much anymore, but he helped me a ton. So for the meantime, guys, we're warming up one plate, a plate and a half, you know, two plates, two plates and a half. Just don't don't rush this, okay? Now, my tips as far as squatting goes, guys, I have learned quite a bit in squatting now. Is my form 100% the most immaculate? Not necessarily. There are a few things I could tweak on, but I'm pretty damn proud of it. Number one, you could just see right there, I was digging my feet deep into the ground. This is vital, okay? You want to be super solid and planted with any movement, but particularly squats, because, you know, the risk factor could be quite high. So I'm digging my, not only my feet, but look at this next set here. We are hitting, I believe this is 275. I'm digging my traps really deep into the bar i'm getting a really good firm placement then once i have that i'm digging my feet right into the ground i'm getting a really nice steady position so once i'm locked off i'm going because you do not want to reposition your uh the bar or your feet mid squat absolutely not that will take so much energy away from you once you're locked in you're good to go and you can see here we have a really nice form that was just super clean so guys i ended up attempting or going for three plates now i had not hit three plates in probably close to a year because of a hip impingement but i was feeling really good today and let's see what happens. So we go and pop. We got one clean, bang, two clean, doof, and oh my gosh, oh, bang. So we get three reps pretty freaking clean with 315, which I was absolutely stoked on. Now I could have came a little bit lower, but guys, as you are hitting weights that you haven't hit in a while, Usually your form isn't going to be, you know, immaculate. You're kind of testing out the waters mentally or psychologically to make sure at least you can hit this weight. And as weeks follow after that, you then, you know, you, you fix the little tweaks and bugs. Does that make sense? Anyways, with the next set, because I got three in my rep range for the, uh, you know, the heavier, more fast twitch muscle fiber compound lifts is four to six. I ended up dropping the weight. So this right here is 300 pounds. Excuse me. And I believe I just get this for four reps. So definitely on the look at that grinder rep definitely on the lower end of the rep range but nonetheless i hit four which i was stoked with and finally for the last one i go for 295 so this is only five pounds lower than 300 which i just hit four reps so i was a little like i needed to hit four reps but i you know there's a good chance i you know i wouldn't because it's only five pounds down and i just grinded out that fourth rep so i was like yo either I, this is gonna fall or for some miracle reason i'm gonna get it so bang that first rep was super clean i remember feeling that Boom. We got two more. Crank. I was like, yo, this is it. Do or die. And boom easy not even hard boys so we got that super stoked on squats now we are moving on to leg press the second compound lift of the leg day i usually like to go for two really heavy you know solid compound lifts before we then move into more isolation based movements or calves okay so again guys we are warming up before i hit my max set of around six and a half plates go easy okay two plates four plates six plates work your way up there and now what i've changed with the leg press is a little tip to you guys as you can see my leg stance is a little bit wider than it used to be and this allows me to hit a greater, <laughs> a greater range of motion. So if you guys notice you're not able to come down as deep with leg press, open up your stance a little bit more, okay? This is going to give your legs room to come down as um, your torso will block the positioning or the, the the depth of your legs because, you know, your legs can't just do it. You're going to hit your chest? No, by keeping them wider, they're able to uh, surpass that uh, chest a little bit. So my camera was kind of slack in focus here, but we got six and a half plates, and I believe we got those for five. And you can see my face, man. Like, I'm... I'm going hard at this, guys. It may not look like I'm going super deep, but believe me, the depth is there. And yo, it's those last few inches that really get you. But at the same time, those last few inches are the most important. That's when you're really going to activate your hamstrings and your glutes in the exercise. So uh, this is our second set. I believe I get four or five. I can't really remember. Um, anyways, as I'm going, guys, a big tip, though, with leg press, as you guys know, is you want to really press and plant yourself deep into the seat, okay? You do not, like I told you, want your butt to come off the seat or the pad when doing this leg press. That is how you can injure yourself because you want your spine to be completely neutral and, and locked in the entire time. The second your butt starts to round... <laughs> If you get that posterior pelvic tilt, uh, you can injure yourself, and that's what happened to me. So let's look at the form here, okay? Look at the last couple inches. So we go, 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 
boom, the last one to two inches is the hardest but the most beneficial. That's like hitting parallel on a squat. That's when you're really going to get your hamstrings involved and notice a lot of growth and strength development. So try coming a little deeper on your leg press. So something I've really been loving as of late are these hamstring curls. I have been cranking them. My strength in this has just been skyrocketing because I actually never hit these on leg day. I just, I never liked them. And uh, I guess I had pretty weak hamstrings because, you know, my squat was, uh, it wasn't, it wasn't optimal with the form I was using. So um, with the squat and leg press going up, guys, of course, your hamstring curls or other machine movements will go up too. It's synergistic right so you can see here i'm just quickly cranking out warm-up sets and then waiting for my heavy set which is a little tip for you guys get your warm-up sets done quickly and then you know rest for your your big sets now with this exercise guys or the more isolation slower twitch based exercises being the uh, machine work usually want to focus a bit more on form and uh, really just that muscle contraction although i go ham like i just strength is in my blood and i just want to go as heavy as i possibly can so you're noticing a little bit of rocking um, but I would not be too worried about it as long as your range of motion is solid and you're getting a good contraction. You know, don't really think too much about it, okay? Just some of you guys really need, in fact, a lot of you guys need to just push yourself harder and stop worrying about, you know, your form being 10 out of 10, 100% out of 100%. Have good form, but push yourself, get stronger. Progressive overload is the name of the game for all of us, okay? To be strong as individuals or creators. So I hit this for 10 to 12, and I believe I get... I, I go 175 pounds, then 170 for two. So I think I get like maybe like 12 reps, 10 reps, and then I go to 170 for like 10 or so. And look at these angles. Can you guys admire that or respect it? Like I'm putting these on like machines. If I'm finding places, you'd think someone would hold this or I'd be bringing a tripod. No, this is literally on like a chin up machine, a weighted assisted machine, but it's awesome because, you know, I have a little tripod, so I'm able to do it. Um, yeah, not too much else with this exercise. It is amazing if you want some bigger, stronger hamstrings. I've been absolutely loving it. Anyways, now to finish it off, we are doing calf raises. Okay, now I've been really focusing on my calves. Um, usually what I would put after that hamstring curl machine is a leg extension, but as of late, I've swapped that for, excuse me, an extra calf exercise just because I really want to focus and bring up my calves opposed to my quads. You know, I feel I have that uh, that squat, that high bar squat, which is able to do just that. So yeah, change it up, guys, and don't feel, you know, like, you know, you have to, you know, if you're hitting your hamstrings, you got to hit the opposing muscle, your quads, like, yes and no, you're also hitting that in your compound lifts, you know, so just do what you want, okay? Anyways, with that said, um, my max weight here is five plates. We are going four to six and then 10 to 12. So again, your calves, guys, are, they have a split of muscle fibers. Every muscle does it's gonna have fast switch and slow twitch fast switch meaning more explosive low rep stuff and your slow twitch meaning more endurance based stuff so i'm doing both okay we have four to six and i believe i get this for maybe five reps on uh, five plates for about three sets or so and it's a little tip for this guys just look at my form okay i'm not rushing this my rest times between each range of motion like the eccentric and concentric is like look on the way up i hold it for a few seconds on the way down i pause for a few seconds i'm not rushing i'm not using momentum i'm not you know shooting it up um, the main thing though is on your way down, hold it for a second, kill all the momentum. So on your way up, it's hundred percent your calf muscle opposed to just momentum. That's why you can see me literally on the way down. Like I'll take a breath. I'll contemplate life for half a second and then I'll go back up, you know, so I'm going up, wait for it. So I come down, I'm chilling. Then I go up. So I'm pressing. That is purely my calf muscle put, putting in the work opposed to rocking. Like I told you guys. And now you can see I'm kind of like jittering it up. Like I go like one two, three. That's normal. And that will happen when you are moving a lot. Oh, that's Kyle, by the way, in the back. He's my squad coach. He's the guy who helped me. He's like squatting like five plates in the back. He's a gem. Um, yeah. Um, like I was saying, you're going to notice you're kind of hitting almost like micro increments where you'll be like, boop, boop, boop. Um, that's naturally going to happen with calves guys. As you get heavier, don't worry too much about it. My advice would just be hit those increments, like go to the top. You know, if you have to jolt up, then do it. Just make sure you're hitting that top contraction where you're basically, I believe they call this, wow, dorsiflexion. No, that's when it's on the way up. What's, what's plantar flexion? I believe that's what it is. Basically in a nutshell, it's a fancy word for saying point your toe out. Okay. Like go up as high as you can and really try to contract your calf, regardless if that takes you a five second rep on the way up, you know, you can see. So I'll go one, two, three, four, like five, like I'm, I'm cranking it. And, uh, it's another tip that I just saw here on this standing calf machine, which I'm now doing 10 to 12 reps. So I'm hitting a bit more of the slower twitch, more endurance based stuff in calves, which is amazing. I've really been noticing in my calves. Um, You'll notice sometimes on this machine in particular, the standing one, your the your foot may begin to slide off a little bit. So what you'll notice is I, I reposition my feet every so often. 
um, just to make sure that you know I have the best really angle of, of hitting this exercise you, so with this guys what i mean is you really want to be pressing with the balls of your feet okay not your heels but the balls of your feet that's what wants to be on the pad not your toes your toes actually want to be over the pad so they are superseding the pad does that make sense where this is why you will see me adjust every so often because the machine pushes you down a bit like they begin to slip your feet so i want to show you because i believe i do it here there right there there you go so every every few reps Bring those toes back on because you want to be pushing at the balls of your feet, okay? That's where you're going to have the best grounding and um, power. You don't want to be pressing from your toes. That'll snap your toes. But your toes should be over the point, right? I just repositioned it there again. So little tip for you guys. Press from the balls, not your toes. That should be over. And I believe that is it. Okay, so I have one more exercise, um, 10 to 12, 10 to 12. Now, the reason I also added in another calf uh, exercise is because I really wanted to pre-fatigue my calves before going into this because I can pretty much do the entire rack for about like 10 to 12 reps. So I believe now I'm doing 350. And I don't say that to brag. I say that just because I guess I have pretty strong calves. I've been hitting calves for quite a while. Um, if you notice that and you notice maybe you're getting too strong at a movement, do an exercise before that to fatigue them so it will be trickier. So now I'm doing like 350 instead of 400 because I had that four to six seated calf exercise, which is awesome because it allows me to have more room to get back to hitting max, you know, progressive overload guys, progressive overload is the name of the game as always. You guys know that. So that is that for my leg workout. I hope this was able to give you guys some advice or or help. And with that, guys, I will see you now back on the main camera. Thanks for watching. Till then, peace. And all right, we are back home from the gym. What is up? Worked out with Andrew. Dude, so stoked in the squats. Hit three plates. I have not hit three plates in honestly about six months. I was going to show you guys Kyle, who's my squat coach, who I've mentioned here on this channel beforehand. But uh, this guy does like five plates. Like I was going to show him, but like he was two in the zone, so I didn't. He came over. He was stoked. Um, maybe we'll speak more about my hip injury later on, but that's why, guys, you know, um, I was stoked with that. Anyways, no, wait, why are you taking the pizza? You're having some? Yeah. You're ready to eat it? Huh? Yeah, yeah, I'll have some. Oh. Yeah, I'm gonna have some. No, no, I'll have some. So now we are back home, guys. I'm going to muck some pizza. Definitely a bit higher on the fat scale. We have some protein in there. Definitely a little bit higher. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna combat this because I'm definitely a little bit lower in protein today with maybe some vegetables for vegetable intake. And then, boy, 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 we got the chicken. Let's get it. Just kind of hoping the pizza itself would have a bit of more uh, chicken on and stuff. But nonetheless, let's do it. Muck, go. And guys, what is going on? I am speaking quietly because it is almost one o'clock. Um, we ate the food, so uh, I ate some of that pizza that I told you guys. I didn't eat too much of the chicken. That's in the fridge. My brother ate a ton of that. And then I had some vegetables, uh, just some frozen ones and a bit of carrots. So that is that. Oh, and I had some vector. Not that it really matters. This isn't like a full day of eating or anything. Um, I'm speaking quiet because my brother and family are sleeping. But this is it, guys. This is the end of this vlog. Uh, I don't know what I titled this, but I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you guys had fun watching it. And I hope it was resourceful as that's what I want all of these vlogs to be in some sense, whether that's, you know, business, fitness, health, etc. And I'm also going to be updating you guys on the business creator coaching academy creator coaching academy because i want to be bringing you guys all along to watch it literally from beginning to a small business to a thriving massive six seven figure business down the road and then the multiple other businesses uh, to show you guys that you know the entire process like no uh, facades or, or me hiding anything like like no the real honest way of how I'm building it which I will definitely update you in the next vlog because some exciting things coming um, but yeah I'm gonna finish it there guys if you guys liked it thumbs up subscribe all that stuff you guys can check the creator courses down below I will be making more creator courses that is the hint um, I'm still gonna keep the ones that are there now but I will be making another one and just changing up a few things but the internal and external creator course guys that's what I'd recommend for now um, you know check it out if you're interested and uh yeah not too much of a plug in vlogs i don't you know that's not my main goal it's just to kind of like show you guys what i'm doing but that's that hope it helped uh stoked on leg day so stoked man i haven't hit three plates like i said in probably close to a year to be honest and uh shout outs to kyle my squat coach he's a gem he was there so i'll finish it there guys i hope you can hear me i love you all thank you guys see you in the next video whenever i see you next and with that much love peace Best.